Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to our virtual field trip part two. My name is Edna Kane, but of course we're old friends now and I'm so glad you came this morning. Well, last week we talked about the life cycle of the butterfly. Where does the butterfly come from? Where does the butterfly begin? What makes up a butterfly? And we discussed that a butterfly was a what? It was an insect, correct. But today we wanna to talk a little bit about deeper than that. But first of all, let's recap what we did last week. What makes up an insect? Well, an insect has how many legs? Six, an insect has six legs, three on each side. And what about the insect's body? Well, an insect has three parts of their body. And what were those parts of the body called? All right, say them with me. It's called a head a thorax, and an abdomen. So insects have six legs, three on each side, and they have three parts of the body, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And what were the stages in the life cycle of the insect? Do you remember? Well, that very first stage in the life cycle of the butterfly was the what? It was the egg. And remember, right? They don't come from chickens, do they, Miss Edna? No, they do not. The eggs come from the mommy butterfly, and the mommy butterfly lays her egg on a special, what kind of plant? A host plant. And that egg gets laid on a very tiny egg on a leaf, and that egg hatches out to become a T-Rex. No, it doesn't hatch out to become a T-Rex. It hatches out to become a what? A caterpillar. Or what was another name for caterpillar? What was that, the la la, la la larva. The egg hatches out to form a larva. And I have some that I'm gonna show you today. I'm super excited. But the larva eats and eats and eats and eats and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that larva transforms himself into what? a chrysalis, or what was that stinky name? The pupa, and the pupa hatches out to become that beautiful butterfly. So that's what we learned last week, but today I wanna dive a little deeper into the caterpillar, because there's so many cool caterpillars out there. Guys, nature is so amazing, and a lot of times we walk past and we miss it because we're so busy. We're, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this, it's hot, I wanna go inside. So guys, we're missing so many cool things that's happening in nature. So I wanna talk to you a little bit about caterpillars. Are caterpillars super fast or super slow? Well, caterpillars are super duper slow. So caterpillars have to come up with ways to protect themselves because I have a lot of people that come in here and say, Miss Edna, I have caterpillars on my plants, but they disappeared. They went away and I wanna know where they go. Well, when a caterpillar is a caterpillar, it's very vulnerable, which means that it, it, the chances of it getting hurt are really big. So caterpillars have to protect themselves from things like, everybody say this after me, say frogs, lizards, birds, people, and what's that last one? The wasp. Ooh, dun, dun, dun. The wasp is like my number one predator for a caterpillar and a wasp, a, a wasp can eat a caterpillar. So over the years, caterpillars have to protect themselves when they're in the caterpillar stage. So caterpillars can crawl away from their host, ple host plant. And a caterpillar can crawl over 40 feet. And if you don't know how, that long, how long that is, it's, it's far. So caterpillars crawl away to keep themselves safe. Now, how can caterpillars protect themselves? Well, everybody go like this. Some caterpillars can actually crawl under a leaf to protect themselves so nobody will see them. And I have a caterpillar that, well, 
Actually, he crawled under the leaf and then he decided to eat the leaf. So here is my caterpillar that crawled under the leaf that is now eating the leaf. And look at them munch away. But a caterpillar can crawl under a leaf to protect themselves so nobody will see him and nobody will eat him. Everybody go like this. Some caterpillars have lots and lots of spikes all over their body to protect themselves. And they look like they're stinging. Um, do you guys know what a cactus looks like? Um, do you ever want to sit on a cactus? No, um, that would really hurt. What about poke your finger in a cactus? No, cactus hurt. Well, some caterpillars make themselves look like they have cactus spikes all over their body, but they don't really hurt. And I actually have some caterpillars with lots of spikes all over their body right here. And they're gonna be right over here. Look at this, oh, how cool is this caterpillar right here? It's got spikes all over its body, but actually when I touch them, they don't hurt at all. As a matter of fact, they kind of feel kind of soft. Uh, well, um, sure, you can come on my finger. They kind of feel kind of soft. They feel like my, eye, like my eyelashes with mascara on. And if you don't know what mascara is, um, it kind of feels like, let's say, does daddy, grandma, grandpa have some whiskers on her chin right here? They kind of feel like whiskers, only, only really soft like that. So this caterpillar actually is really, really cool. This caterpillar, is called the Gulf Fritillary. Does it look like I have a mustache over here? Um, this Gulf Fritillary actually host, its host plant is called Passion Vine. And on this host plant of Passion Vine, I have another caterpillar. Oh my goodness, look at this one. Now look at that, do they look the same? Absolutely not. Well, they kind of look the same because they have those spikes all over their body, but they're different colors. I'm gonna try to pick this one up right here. This caterpillar over here is a very special caterpillar. It actually, its host plant is passion vine as well, but it's the, actual caterpillar is the zebra longwing caterpillar. And this is a very special caterpillar because it is the Florida State butterfly. And look at those, that white body with those black spikes. And it looks like it's stinging too, but it is not. Guys, there are no stinging butterfly caterpillars. There are only stinging moth caterpillars. Now, how do we know the difference? Well, again, we know the difference by what the caterpillar is eating. Boys and girls, if you ever find a caterpillar and you don't know what it is, don't touch it. You want to research it first because there are stinging moth caterpillars and some of those actually can hurt a little bit. So if you ever wanna know what a caterpillar is gonna become, look at what it's eating. And if you see it crawling on the ground, then maybe pick it up with a jar or something and then look it up on the computer. But don't pick it up unless you know what it is. Now, Miss Edna's a trained professional, so I do know what these are. So this caterpillar over here and the other one is the Gulf Fritillary and the Zebra Longing, Longwing. And their self-defense mechanism is that they have spikes and they look like they're stinging. Now, everybody go like this. Some caterpillars can actually curl up a leaf and hide inside a leaf to protect themselves. So nobody will see them and nobody will eat them. They kind of look like a leaf taco, but I wouldn't eat that taco. And 
Um, speaking of eating, um, I'm getting a little hungry. Um, do you think I could eat this plant right here? No, no, that's not a good one. What about this plant right here? Can I eat this plant over here? Actually, I could eat that plant, but it's yucky. Um, this plant over here, um, I ate it, but should I eat plants? No, never put a plant in your mouth if you don't know what it is, because it might be toxic. Well, guys, some caterpillars eat plants that are toxic or poisonous. Now the caterpillar becomes toxic or poisonous and nobody will eat him. And just so you know, this plant is fennel. It is edible and we can eat it. Miss Edna would never put anything in her mouth that was going to be dangerous or toxic. Well, the caterpillars that eat plants that are toxic, now those caterpillars become toxic and nobody will eat them. And I have over here, once again, I have this caterpillar over here, which is the monarch caterpillar. And milkweed, boys and girls, is considered toxic. So now nobody will eat the monarch caterpillar because it will make them, sell, them sick. Now, let's see. I have another plant here. Can you guys see me? How about now? Oh man, what is it called? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> what is it called if I can camouflage myself and blend into my environment so nobody will see me? It's called what? <gasps> camouflage, good job. Some caterpillars, some chrysalis, some butterflies can camouflage themselves and blend into their environment so nobody will see them and nobody will eat them. And I have a really cool chrysalis over here. And this chrysalis is camouflaged on this stick right here. Boys and girls, does this chrysalis not look just like a stick? How cool is that? This is the giant swallowtail chrysalis. And this chrysalis will hatch out to become the giant swallowtail butterfly. But boys and girls, some caterpillars, some butterflies, some chrysalis can camouflage themselves and blend into their environment so nobody will see them and nobody will eat them. Now, would you believe me if I told you that I really do have a caterpillar that knows karate? Hiya! What? No, you don't believe me? Well, Miss Seddon doesn't have to lie to make friends. I actually have right here a caterpillar that knows karate. And I'm gonna show you. The caterpillar, let's see if I can find him. Up oh, here it is. Let's see if I can get this off. <gasps> this caterpillar is called the black swallowtail, like a ninja. Woo! And this caterpillar, if you irritate it, it will karate chop my finger. Watch this. Hiya! <gasps> Hiya! Hi! Yeah! Hi ya! Hi ya! <laughs> Does it really know karate? No, it doesn't really know karate, but did that really look cool? Actually, it doesn't really know karate, but it's really stinky. Um, the horns in the caterpillar's head are called osmeterium, and osmeterium are scent horns. S-C-E-N-T, which means he's trying to tell me he's big, he's ugly, and he's stinky, so don't mess with him. But that is probably one of the coolest caterpillars I think I've ever seen. Let's do it one more time. Hi-ya! <laughs> now, the bigger the caterpillar gets, the stinkier the horns are. Now, I want to focus a little bit on this caterpillar right now. I have in front of me 
actually four different plants. Now remember when I told you if you ever want to know what a caterpillar is going to become, you want to look at what a caterpillar is eating. Well, I have a ca the same caterpillar, I have it on three different host plants. Okay, and the first host plant I want to show you is the parsley. And look over here, my friends. On this parsley, I have one, two, three, four caterpillars. But look on this fennel plant. What is going on? Well, this caterpillar looks like it's in that J position. And what does that mean when it's going in the J position? Does anybody remember? It means that the caterpillar is done being a caterpillar and it's going to make its chrysalis. Now, wait a minute, Miss Edna. I have a caterpillar on parsley, fennel, and then I also have to the right of me, I have a plant called dill. If you said a caterpillar can only eat one specific host plant, then how can this caterpillar eat these three different plants? Well, actually, it's because all of these plants are in the same family. They're all in the, oh, this one's going to blow your mind. They are all in the carrot family. Now, how many of you out there do not like carrots? Mm -mm -mm. Well, guess what? The carrot family plants is definitely a favorite of this black swallowtail. But in the wild, there's not a lot of carrots or parsley, dill, and fennel that grow. But nature has taken care of this. Remember I told you nature is so cool? Well, in the wild, there is a plant called wild carrot. And we actually took this out of the ground and put it in the water right from the front of the butterfly encounter. And this, does this not look just like parsley and fennel? Again, how cool is that? Now, guys, there's another caterpillar that's out there that I wish I would have had it here to show you. But there's a butterfly called the long-tailed skipper. And this butterfly lays her eggs on bean plants. So if you ever want to grow at home, lima beans, green beans, any kind of a bean plant, this is a fun activity that you could do at home. But what happens is this butterfly flies around and she smells this bean plant. She lays tiny round eggs all on the leaves. When the caterpillar hatches out, the caterpillar will actually make little tents out of the leaves. But when the caterpillar has to go potty, it sticks its little tush out the end of the leaf and it flings its poop all the way on the other side. Do you know why it does that? Because a wasp can smell a caterpillar's poop. So the wasp is all the way over there looking for the caterpillars, but inside the little tent, the caterpillar's going, hee, 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 that big old wasp can't find me. And that's a true story. You have to look it up. It's called the long-tailed skipper, and that's the coolest self-defense mechanism that I know of these caterpillars. Now, boys and girls, you might be asking me, well, Miss Edna, you know, if wasps are so bad, why do we even need them? Because boys and girls, a wasp can be a little bit of a bully. A wasp, if you've ever been stung by a wasp, a wasp does not need a reason to sting you at all. A wasp will come out of nowhere and just <laughs> And I had a child ask me one time, Miss Edna, why do we even need them? Well, boys and girls, Nature has a balance, and if we got rid of all the wasps, then we might not have enough plants to feed all of our caterpillars. So sometimes, you know, we have to balance out, you know, what nature throws at us. And wasps are pollinators as well. So a wasp might eat a few caterpillars, and quite a few caterpillars over here are still growing and still prospering. So again, 
it's nature's balance. We have to take the good with the bad. So boys and girls, we talked about caterpillars and self-defense mechanisms, and I showed you some really cool, cool pupa. And um, a lot of people ask me, Miss Edna, how do you know all of this? How did you learn all of this? Well, boys and girls, I studied. I learned under an entomologist, but the rest of it was books. I read a lot of books and I researched a lot of things on the computer. And you guys can do the same thing. A lot of us are home. Pick a butterfly, pick a caterpillar, research it, learn it, and then come up with your own assumptions and start planting some of these plants that we have over here. And that's how we start and tend to and continue our butterfly gardens out there. I am so glad you guys came to talk to me today. Um, now, last week, you guys, well, hello there. Last week, you guys had a lot of really good questions. And um, I want to know if you guys have any more questions today. And I think Caleb, um, Caleb's maintaining a really nice distance over here. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Miss Edna, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? Good. You've done such a wonderful job today. We've definitely got a lot of folks with some questions. First one off the bat is from Amelia. Amelia. She wants to know, what are some of the most common native Florida butterflies that you might see in our backyards? Oh, Amelia, there are so many wonderful native butterflies. Actually, every single one of the ones that I pointed out today are common to Central Florida. From the monarch, the long tail skipper, the black swallowtail, there's so many of them. And if you want to see them in your yard, remember, what was that key? It's planting the right kind of plants that will attract them to your backyard. But we have at least 60 to 70 different varieties of butterflies in Central Florida alone. So I hope that answers your question. All right, another one, going back to the arch enemy wasps. Julia wants to know, do wasps lay eggs? Julia, that's such a good question. And Julia, I just want you to know that we have a butterfly named the Julia butterfly. She's native to South Florida, usually and below, but we get them sometimes in the butterfly encounter. And I have some in chrysalis right now. I can't wait for them to open, but they're a beautiful brush footed butterfly with really long wings. And I actually, I have butterfly ADD and I almost completely forgot your question, but I remember now. The question is about wasp. How many eggs does a wasp lay? I have no idea. I really don't research wasp um, because they're so mean, but I will find out. And that's one that I'm gonna research and look up because wasps are just not in my wheelhouse. I just know that they're bad and I don't want them anywhere near my caterpillars. And just so you know, it's not just one wasp that's kind of bad out there. There are multiple wasps. And there's even a wasp that's super small, almost the size of a fruit fly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really bad. All right. So another question, uh, Ariana wants to know, uh, what happens if a butterfly egg falls off a leaf? Ooh, Ariana, that is a really good question, Ariana. Um, butterfly eggs generally do not fall off leaves. Butterflies will lay an egg and it's super sticky and it drives really, really fast. So um, generally butterfly eggs don't fall off of the leaves. However, sometimes we will harvest butterfly eggs to protect them. Because remember I said there are a lot of predators out there that might want to eat a butterfly egg. And you know what one of them is? The ladybug. Ladybugs will eat a butterfly egg. I know, I'm sorry to tell you this, but that's a ladybug's job is to rid the garden of bad bugs. And nature thinks that butterflies are kind of bad bugs in the garden. So sometimes we'll harvest butterfly eggs and put them in a little teeny cup and hatch them out and protect them in a little cup. But on a general rule of thumb, butterfly eggs generally don't fall off. And, and if one falls off, then 
hopefully it's close enough to the host plant when that caterpillar comes out it will eat its eggshell and crawl back up and find its host plant um, but generally again they, they don't fall off they're really sticky they stay on really good they can survive hurricane winds on those leaves i mean wow very good all right another question laura wants to know how many butterflies are poisonous hi laura um, how many butterflies are poisonous? Well, um, I don't eat them, so I wouldn't know. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. Uh, most butterflies are considered, um, how many butterflies are considered poisonous? I know the monarch is, and actually what's really cool is because the monarch is toxic or poisonous, the, the viceroy butterfly will mimic it so that the nature will think that it's toxic and poisonous too. But I'm not really sure how, how many butterflies are toxic or poisonous. Um, once they're in the butterflies, I'm just like in the, oh, you're so pretty stage, so. <laughs> Very good. All right, Miss Edna, Zane and Jude want to know, what's the correct way to hold a butterfly and should we be holding a butterfly in nature? Jude, is this the same Jude that asked us the question last week? If so, welcome back, Jude. If not, nice to meet you, Jude. Um, generally, we don't hold butterflies in nature. We try not to catch them because remember when I first taught you in the beginning, if a butterfly breaks its wings, it will never repair itself. But um, actually, if I have a butterfly that's close enough, do you see a butterfly, Miss Debbie? Um, there is a specific way to hold a butterfly. And what we do, if the butterfly's on your finger, we gently pinch these two fingers and hold the butterfly really close to its body. And that's how we can hold a butterfly. But never grab it like this, because again, it could damage the wings. Butterflies have four wings. They have two front wings and two hind wings. So we wanna make sure we clasp both sets of wings with our fingers to be able to hold them. Now wings are made up of thousands of beautiful scales that are layered like shingles on a roof. So anytime we touch a butterfly's wings, sometimes we see those scales on our fingers. And ladies, sometimes it's the prettiest, it almost looks like eyeshadow, and I wanna just wipe it on my eyes. But for the most part, um, we actually can clasp a butterfly um, with our two fingers like that with its wings, but try not to hold the butterfly's wings if you don't know what you're doing because it can be damaging. All right, so what is the largest butterfly Cynthia wants to know? Oh, <clears throat> what is the largest butterfly? Well, in the state of Florida, in central Florida, I could definitely attest to two butterflies or three butterflies that are really, really large. One of them, the giant swallowtail, <coughs> excuse me, my water. The giant swallowtail is a big, big butterfly. <coughs> excuse me, well, thank you. Also, the tiger swallowtail, beautiful, big butterfly. And then there is the palamede swallowtail, huge butterfly. All of these butterflies, really, really big, really, really beautiful. Um, as far as comparing them to each, um, I've never really compared them, but those are our three largest butterflies that we have in Central Florida. All right, Miss Edna, a lot of great questions flowing through. We'll take a couple more. Um, Dave wants to know, do butterflies find shelter when it rains? Do butterflies find shelter when it rains? Absolutely, excuse me. Butterflies find shelter all the time. As a matter of fact, butterflies don't have houses. Butterflies don't have condos. Butterflies don't live in apartments. This is where a butterfly lives. And we can't really show all around here, but all around here, I'm looking at different butterflies hanging out and roosting all around us. You'll just have to come over and visit me to find out. But butterflies definitely shelter themselves in the rain. A lot of times we know it's gonna rain before the forecast tells us because the butterflies stop flying. Butterflies don't fly in the rain. So a butterfly will find a nice quiet spot. It will hide 
under itself, it'll hide under, under leaves and it makes itself really, really thin. And that's how a butterfly avoids the rain. But yes, butterflies definitely shelter themselves in the rain by hiding in the plants, in the bushes, in the trees, and in the leaves. Very good. All right, Miss Edna, Jennifer wants to know, how can we get a caterpillar or create our own butterfly garden to see this at home? Um, Jennifer, that is a great question. How can you get a caterpillar? It's all in the plants. Every single caterpillar that I showed you today that is on these plants, we got from outside. I didn't buy them. I didn't order them from any place special. We, we actually, the butterflies laid their eggs and now is the time of year. The cold weather is behind us. It's getting nice and warm. Cold weather slows the life cycle down of the butterfly, where warm weather accelerates the life cycle. So now that, that it's getting nice and toasty and we're starting to run the air conditioning at night, the butterfly caterpillars are starting to multiply a lot faster. So how do you get them in your yard? It's all in the plants. If you just want to see butterflies in your yard, then you plant nectar plants. If you want both butterflies and caterpillars, which creates the habitat in your yard, then you plant host and nectar. It's a three to one ratio. It's three nectar to every one host. And we actually have made that a little easier for you. If you go to our website, which is lukasnursery.com, we have a sheet that you could print out and you could look at all of these different plants. But Again, to attract them and to get caterpillars, you don't have to buy them. If you plant the right plants, they will come. So it's all in the plants. And we're right here to help you do that. Thank you so much, Miss Edna, for your time and answering all those questions today. Well, thank you so much for coming back. I'm so glad you joined me today. Please stay tuned. We might have some other things in the horizon for you guys to check out. But again, I'm humbled by your generosity and your comments. I love what I do. Please get outside, get some fresh air, follow a bug, watch a butterfly, but most importantly, plant a garden. If, if you build it again, they will come. Thanks for joining us again. You guys have a great day.